What's up YouTube, Dirt Tenter here with this week's garage sale and estate sale finds. Not a whole lot in quantity, but some pretty good quality items this week. Uh, starting out with this vase here, I paid $35. Um, wasn't the best purchase in the world, um, but it is a Van Briggle piece. And there's a mark there, it says Van Briggle. Um, I don't buy a lot of this stuff. I thought it was uh, a little bit more expensive because when I do see it, um, it's usually priced pretty high. But um, this piece is is fairly common. Uh, it's maybe worth 25 bucks. Uh, I got a pair of salt and pepper shaker glass. Um, these are Waterford. Uh, I paid five dollars for those. Um, for whatever reason, selling Waterford is really difficult, but Salt and pepper shakers are fairly easy to sell. Um, I guess everybody breaks theirs or wants a pair for their you know, dining room table. So salt and pepper shakers, definitely a good idea to pick up when you see them. And so just quickly, I went to a church sale and they had some jewelry. Um, I bought anything. Everything was from a, like 25 cents up to a dollar. Um, so really cheap. So I just kind of bought anything that you know had any value at all or anything that was marked. Um, so these are the pieces I picked up that were the costume pieces. Um, this piece here is Swarovski, it's just a little crystal. Um, there's a pair of cyan earrings, that's gold filled, this thing. There's a JJ brooch, um, this is Capri, this is Monet. Um, this piece here is Jafari. Here's a nice uh, agate piece. This one's definitely agate. Um, there is one broken. Um, piece, but I'm gonna glue it back together and it, it should be fine. Um, nice little carved piece there. Um, this piece right here has a 14 karat gold back on it, just the butterfly. Um, but this was a quarter, and I need 14 karat backs. Um, so, I, so I always check costume jewelry because sometimes people put uh, 14 karat backs on them for some reason. Um, and if you can get it for a quarter, it's worth it. Um, you get enough of those, and you'll get some a decent amount of gold. Uh, there's a Trafari, here's like a stone heart piece, uh, another Alex and Annie bracelet. Um, so yeah, just some, some uh, decent little costume jewelry pickups there. So here's some of the sterling pieces I picked up. I'm even going to do this stuff really quickly because I've got to get to work pretty soon. So here is some sterling earrings. Here is a sterling San Francisco necklace. Um, I found a ton of these San Francisco charms. Um, a gold filled, uh, what is that, the college pins, uh, the fraternity pins, and for $10 sterling, uh, X's and O's, pretty nice design, pretty heavy. A sterling uh, bracelet here, cuff bracelet with the little charms there, the lapis and turquoise and whatever. Um, here is an Anne Klein sterling piece, a little Maybe fake turquoise, maybe real. I'm not sure. Um, here is a nice sterling necklace with a nice blue stone right there. Um, this was a pretty good deal. Uh, these are sterling inlay cufflinks. $10. Um, I do really well with the inlay stuff. Um, gets bought up right away all the time. Um, and they're pretty heavy. Uh, this piece really looks like gold. Um, it's either gold filled or gold. Uh, I can't really tell right off the bat, but it is not marked at all. Um, but it is um, definitely looks like 10 carat or something. And it's got this clasp here, this um, hook. It's kind of not your usual hook on something that's uh, gold filled. Um, it's it's older too. That, that um, hook right here is kind of telling me that it's older because it's got that double loop there but absolutely no markings could be gold if it is it's not that heavy gold filled I'm happy with as well but pick that up alright and here is the better sterling this week uh, this is all silver here um, you can see four dollars five dollars I paid a dollar for this and seven dollars for this this is a nice big bracelet and it is marked on the back there sterling and then it's also marked over here sterling silver Let's see 
and you can just tell by how, how it sounds and everything. Um, maybe you can see it. It's also got a note there, but there we go, sterling silver. This weighs 80 grams right here by itself. Um, this piece is marked down inside the cup. And there you go, you can kind of see it. So almost everybody's going to miss this. So sometimes I find these little jigger shots in the kitchen and uh, nobody is going to charge you a ton of money for it. Um, here are these pieces. So this one is marked. Sorry about the focusing. Right there. 900. I tested it. It's 900. Um, this one, same thing, is marked. 900 right there. So uh, there's about uh, 300 grams of sterling right there. And I paid um, whatever that is, like 16, 17 dollars. Uh, so pretty good pickups on the silver this week. And I also picked up these two pieces here. Um, nice heavy sterling chain. Nice little slice of um, quartz or something there in the coin holder. Uh, picked that up for a few dollars and also for a few dollars a nice uh, crushed turquoise and coral butterfly little cuff bracelet um, like five bucks for the two of those pretty nice little pieces of silver there I picked up a pretty cool little pocket watch just an Elgin pocket watch um, the lady told me right away oh it doesn't run right it like starts and stops um, which is totally fine with me and that's why I was priced at 40 bucks um, I see this happen all the time. Uh, basically, if a watch isn't running, it gets discounted real heavily for some reason. Even though the parts are pretty easy to fix on these common pocket watches, and they're you know they're pretty easy to find. Um, but just like this, so I can tell right away that it's uh, gold filled or gold case, right? Obviously, it's not it's not solid gold. Um, they would have checked that, I'm sure. But um, just like this, 40 bucks is still fine. Um, I would pay that right away, um, no matter, you know, this is an Elgin, if it's a Waltham, Elgin, whatever. 40 bucks for uh, this size pocket watch and gold filled, uh, right away is pretty easy. But this one has a really nice engraving, um, which is going to help the value on this out a lot. Um, so you can find movements, right? Like this is not a rare movement. There's no special um, levers or anything like the watch I got last week. Um, so you can switch out this movement all, all you want um, and fix it just fine. But finding a nice engraved case like this um, is a little bit more difficult. That's in good condition. There's no dents. Um, you know, it's not all worn away. And it's got this nice uh, horse design on there. So, uh, you know, I can get about 75, 80 bucks and someone will buy it, no problem. So I picked that up. All right, guys. So here is my baby for the week. Um, another one, I'm sure you clock people are going to cringe at, at this movement or the, this movement moving right here, the pendulum. You're supposed to lock that down before you like move this thing around because it's, see how it's still moving. It's going to move forever because it's really finely balanced. Um, but I wanted to show you guys this uh, clock, so I had to move it. Um, this is a Jaeger LeCoulter, hopefully I'm saying that right, um, clock. And I have been trying to buy one of these for a very long time. This is an Atmos clock. Um, those of you who are like Pawn Star buffs will know that there was an Atmos clock on one of the episodes. Um, where the guy just pulled out the little wood wedge and it starts running again and you know uh, You usually find them like this where they're not running um, But the regular Atmos clock um, With the glass panels goes for about uh, four or five hundred bucks not running um, This happens to be a very rare model or not very rare, but uh, you know rare enough to me um, And I saw this in the pictures and I really wanted it um, so I got there really early, and I was like, okay, that you know, there's a certain price I can pay for it, and that's the most I'm going to pay. Um, so I ended up paying 500 bucks for this, which is the most money I've ever spent on a single item uh, ever. 
But the reason why I did is because of this Lucite panel. So this is a Lucite panel. I'll try and show you. There's some of the side there. And there's some of the other side. And I'm even going to try and show you the back here. So this is kind of what the back looks like. This is a vacuum sealed chamber with a gas filled tube um, that expands with barometric pressure. Any changes in temperature in the air, I'm sorry I'm getting all twisted up here, um, winds the clock just basically by uh, changes in temperature. A uh, really cool design, a uh, really famous company. The Lucite panels are in great condition. The whole um, clock is in great condition. So um, I did a bunch of research on this before I bought it. Even not running this clock still is going to go a thousand to twelve hundred fifty dollars. Um, running goes up to about two thousand twenty five hundred dollars. Um, there are multiple multiple completed auctions that I was able to look at that show that this is worth at least a thousand dollars. I have no problem um, with that estimate. Um, so very cool. I'm going to learn how to. So there's a way to open up this front panel. Um, there's a way to lock this down. I'm going to figure all that out later um, before I ship it because it's obviously it's very fragile to ship and everything. Um, this one has been serviced at some point. There's a sticker on the bottom from a clock shop. Um, so somebody's looked at this before. I'm hoping it's, you know, only a few minor adjustments to get this running. I'm sure it is. Um, that's usually how these clocks are. You kind of have to um, get them running and then leave them there and never touch them again otherwise they'll stop running again because it's very very fine uh, the balancing there's a bunch of um, screws underneath here that uh, help it stay balanced and there's like a some parts up here that help the timing and everything like that um, so yeah I've been chasing this clock for oh, at least five years I've seen the regular model and I see it for four or five hundred bucks all the time I've seen four or five of them um, and I can't really buy that clock at four or five hundred bucks and, and try and get more money for it because um, that's what they bring. But this um, special model, it's called the Marina model, um, actually brings more money than the regular Atmos. So that's why I was able to pay the five hundred bucks. I said if it was priced at five hundred, I was going to take it. And this one came home with me. So it, it's just a beautiful clock. So if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. Comment and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.